My name is Judy Graham. My name is Anna. For the church, I'm, I'm a grief counselor, so I do grief counseling. Um, and I'm also co-leader of the women's ministry and Bible study. And I also um, am a co-leader of a community group. Right now I'm involved in women's ministries and Bible study. So I was 36 years old when I became a Jesus follower. I always was a believer, but I hadn't followed him. Um, for 36 years I had believed um, and had actually gone to church. I was 25 when the Lord got a hold of me. It's significant that I was an adult um, and that I, I made the conscious effort. I, you know, I had been baptized as a baby, I'd gone to all the sacraments, but this time it was my decision as an adult. Uh, my life before was pretty messed up, but I, I have to go back to the beginning when I was a little girl up in the mountains in, in Northern California, and we didn't have a kindergarten, we didn't have any neighbors, so my mother took me to Sunday school so that I could be with other children. And I remember the Sunday school teacher, Mrs. Dick, and we would sing, Yes, Jesus Loves Me, and uh, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. And I guess I, I never forgot that. And like I say, I wasn't raised in a Christian home. But so I would have that exposure. That was why that uh, why that happened. And uh, as a kid, I would go to church by myself, or with a couple of neighbor girls. We would walk to church by ourselves. Well, I remember going to church, and I remember um, believing in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. I believed in the Trinity, um, but I also saw God as not a condemning Father, but I felt. I believed he was keeping this list of everything that he did wrong. I did not really see him as a loving God. Um, I believed that Jesus died for me, but I didn't really understand how he wanted me to have a relationship with him. The Holy Spirit, I don't know. We called him the Holy Ghost, um, but I don't really remember thinking too much about who he was or, or even what he was. Um, and I did that for 36 years, thinking that I had a lot of guilt, uh, a lot of, of, a lot of love too. It wasn't a bad time. I, I, you know, I loved going to church. I had lots of family and friends. And when I was 25, the Lord miraculously moved me to Florida, uh, Winter Haven, Florida, and these two ladies from Sunday school. Uh, came to my house and I was afraid they I saw the one out there and I thought oh my goodness she's got her Bible she's gonna come in here and, and read and pray yikes but I opened the curtain and she saw me so I had to open the door and it's very nice and about the fourth or fifth week she brought the Sunday school teacher and they could tell that I was hurting and because my life I had gotten into stuff that was just too much stuff and uh, anyway, they knew that I was hurting and they asked if, you know, they told me that God loved me. And I couldn't believe that. I thought, no, no, you come back, I'll get my life straight. And then you come back and we'll talk about this. And then they showed me Romans uh, 3, or 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that I was part of that all who had sinned. And they told me, you haven't done anything that we haven't thought of doing. And I thought, really? Wow. And then they showed me John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever might believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I was part of that. And we knelt down in front of my sofa, and the three of us prayed together. And that was life-changing because I knew I needed to be forgiven for my sins. And it was a day that I will never, ever forget. I can remember the exact time. Um, it was 10 a.m. on March 1st, 1976, uh, when I surrendered my life to Jesus. And I asked the Holy Spirit to come into my life and guide my life and take over. and. Um, I was there with my mother, it was her birthday, and my very, very strong Catholic mother also accepted Jesus. And um, I, sometimes I think when you've been in religion, when you've um, 
believed in him, but you really haven't walked with him, there's that foundation already there. And all you need to say yes. <laughs> That's why I can tell you exact time um, that I said yes. My life now has, has really changed. I lost my husband four years ago of, after 44 years of marriage. And uh, I decided I needed a new beginning. So here I am in Arizona. Uh, never liked the desert, but here I am. So I'm just, I'm trusting that the Lord moved me here and uh, just waiting to see what he has for me. Gave my life to Jesus and asked him to be uh, my Lord and Savior. Um, my whole life changed. I, I just became very, very hungry for the word. I couldn't get enough of it. I went to Bible studies. I read and read and read. Um, I started going to prayer groups. I started having um, my own personal quiet time in the morning, uh, which I still do to this day. I, every day starts with my time with the Lord. Um, it was really exciting for me to realize that I could talk to him, that I could come to him, that I could communicate with him, and even confess that I didn't have to go to a priest, that I could every morning come to our Lord and, and confess what I hadn't done the day before, what I had done, and just know I was forgiven. That's probably a big key, is knowing I was forgiven. That whole long list that I thought was being kept was no longer there wasn't a list. He forgave me, he loved me, um, and even though I fail, um, he still loves me and he still forgives me. And that was huge, just huge for me. Oh, my first bit of advice would be stay in God's Word. Get into God's Word and stay in it. And as you grow, um, develop a prayer life. And I always say, if you're praying God's Word, you know that you're praying His will. Um, definitely get into the Word. It's where it's all at. It's um, every answer that you ever want is there. Um, the Word tells us what our Lord wants us to do. Um, the advice is awesome. Um, we can just know Him by reading the Word. And that's my first. The other thing is to really have your own personal quiet time. I, I think that's just pivotal to set aside some time every day just for you and your Lord. Um, I just think those are the two that are the most important. Lots of other things. I think it's important to, to know what your spiritual gifts are. I think it's important to start serving, um, be in a very um, active um, God-loving church, be in fellowship with other believers. Oh, I could go on and on, I just, but it all happens. So I think once you, once you fall in love with him and you know he loves you beyond a shadow of a doubt, you just want to do those things. I guess it's been about 40 years ago now. I went back to visit that Sunday school teacher, from my preschool Sunday school teacher, and to tell her how my life had gone. And she said, Anna, I loved you, and I prayed for you, and I don't think God ever took his hand off of you.